Everybody, welcome to another installment of Show to Be with Mike G, the show of life, the show of run, the show of travel, the show of appearing aloof but yet being incredibly observant. Today we're talking to Kate Perry of La Maison Nivellier, one of the greatest houses of spirits, most notably for their Rom Hamden estate, for instance. We talk about that in this conversation, but we get into to life a lot. You know, I mean it's show to be, right? I get like life and all that, but we we kind of learn, I think. One of my favorite things about doing these interviews is if I learn something about myself through someone else and their unique experiences, you know, we're all very, very unique children here, but it's nice to know that you're not alone. Like people have the same proclivities. They travel the same. They view relationships the same, the world, things of that nature. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy this great chat with Kate Perry. Um, I'm a big fan of, of apples okay. on road trips, um, because you can then like chuck the core out the window and it will biodegrade. Or yeah. Whatever. It kind of feels like Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I like to eat apples. We can, on the road. Let's see. Red, you're a red apple person? Or, yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. With the, yeah. Granny Smith's too much? Too, too tart. I see. Yeah. Good, good in pies. Good for pies. Exactly. Good, good in pies. <laughs> I... Are you a sweets person or a salty person? I'm kind of in the middle. I like my sweet with my salty, like dark okay. chocolate and sea salt. It's oh, my yeah. jam. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I really just wanted to take a chance to talk about combos. Combos are like my favorite. Yeah. You know combos? Yeah. They're like the best. Well, the, the actual like little things with the pretzels and the filled with cheese and all okay, that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That I think is potentially. Is that your the perfect, road trip snack? That's my road trip snack. Cool. Yeah, because Doritos, if you're driving, or Cheetos, you get shit all over your hands, and yeah. I get on the steering wheel, and I don't want that. On the steering wheel, like you wipe them on, yeah. Or you can wipe it. Yeah. You know, you don't have. A, I mean, not everyone's equipped with wipes and stuff in the car, you know. But yeah, salty is a thing, and that you know, it's actually funny too. Is some of the ROMs we were talking about the, the Hampton Estate. There's a nice saltiness there too. I would agree. You know. Yeah. And it kind of makes it a really nice snack, doesn't it? <laughs> Actually, Hampton you know Estate, what? the world's best snack. <laughs> yeah, especially on, what is, what is today, Wednesday? Yeah, Wednesday afternoon. This ain't, this ain't too bad. This is a pretty good life, Kate, okay? let's be honest. Yeah. We're, we're I, here surrounded by old bottles and shit and get to talk about your life. Totally. Well, so, all right. I, I, I dropped the Aquarius thing a lot lately. Yeah. Um, Because we're really fucking cool and we're chill do you, you have a temper at all a temper yeah um it takes a while to get there like probably persistent well yeah i i have the 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 double whammy i have the um aquarian middle child oh no so i'm like probably one of the most like patient and understanding and like yeah, you know, very chill until I'm not. <laughs> it's right. It's almost not polar that though it indicates some other things. But and when you're, does anybody? I'm asking you because I'm asking myself. Yeah, right? go on. <laughs> does anybody say you? You seem like you don't care. Yeah, yeah. I think that there's definitely like an aloofness that comes with Aquarians, yeah. and I, I wonder sometimes what that is because. Sometimes it feels like, you know, like I'm not totally connected with what's going on around me because I'm like a little bit in my head about yeah, it. Yeah, like yeah, I'm just yeah. like thinking about like I like to think about like the different possibilities and like kind of what's going on. So I think that there's definitely like a it's it's not that I don't care. It's just that like I'm thinking about other things. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, you're pondering. Yeah. Right. And it, it I, I love that because I. The, the, my, what I found out as I'm getting older is my greatest need in this world, it's not rum, it's not mezcal, even though that helps. Uh-huh. Shit, it isn't even food. I just 
need to feel understood. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I was talking about this last night and given you're in with another Aquarius, my hairstyle is Aquarius. So we get on very, really, really well. And we were talking about this, you and I, before recording. It's like we, we turn it on when we want to turn it on. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, it's 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 on, but I'm not sure that everybody has the opportunity to get to know us when we're out being on. Yeah. Does that make sense? I, I don't think I've met an Aquarian extrovert. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm not sure if they exist. If you're listening, you're an extrovert <laughs> Aquarian, please come find me because I want to know you. Because yeah. every Aquarian that I've met... Um, tends to be like pretty like you know a deep thinker kind yeah. of you know in their own brain a little bit sort of i don't know like like likes to march to the beat of their own drum you know you i said that exact this is really strange because <laughs> i said that exact phrase really and, uh, yeah because my friend raven she we, we talked about this exercise if you will when you are dating somebody uh-huh and I didn't know that it was important to me until recently, but her exercise is that she wants to be able to have somebody that she can just make a really on a, on a whim decision. Yeah. And then they're, they're just going to be cool with it. Yeah. Right? Totally. And I said... Hashtag why I'm single. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah, mostly. We'll see. But um, I said it's because you have your beat and you want people to march to it. Or I, yeah, I mean, I just... I just want to have the freedom to march to my own beat. Yeah. Like I like, and I mean, I love my, I love a lot of parts about my job. But one thing that I just really appreciate is that, you know, I can go get on a plane on a minute's notice. Yeah. I can, you know, kind of work with my own schedule and, you know, really control how I sort of interact with the world and when I get to sort of hide out from the world. Um, that sounds really lovely. Yeah, it's pretty <laughs> great. Um, but I think also like there's, um, yeah, there there's kind of a an aloofness that tends to be inherent in I think Aquarians so. for sure. Right, and I've gotten, you know, my relationships mostly have been pretty shitty, um, <laughs> mostly, but because a lot of the time people just don't think I care. But I care yeah. more than they'll ever know. Probably. Yeah. Maybe we're just not really good at voicing that. I think that's it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or like bring other people into the. Totally. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll have whole conversations in my head. I'll be like, well, we totally talked about that. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> we we bonded over this whole thing. I'm like, oh, that was all in my head. I didn't actually say any of that to you. That, uh, <laughs> that is an actual reality. And, you know, it's funny, too, is my, my mate, Mark, uh, I've known him since college. And I just say stuff to piss him off because he did astrology is whatever it is to whoever you know it's your own choice how you believe into it or not and i go mark that's so you as a taurus and i'd like bug him about it and he just gets so pissed at me like in a funny way so it, it's funny that that i think that that's actually a decent decoder ring for how p- certain people can be i really do that's really funny that you say that because i i have some friends who are really into astrology mm. and they like you know check their tarot yeah, and like yeah. know all this stuff and like i'm very skeptical about it and just sort of like oh that's like a a, a <laughs> funny pastime mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. like i kind of liken it to like reading like quizzes <laughs> and like magazines right like that's a funny entertainment it but it doesn't have anything to really do with me which they respond that's such an aquarian thing to say <laughs> i'm like damn it <laughs> I mean, I'm just starting to embrace it now. You know, yeah. it's just easier to do it that way. But that's, you. I, I love this concept of, of road tripping. So like what's, because you lived in Maine, you lived in Washington, you lived in Colorado. I mean, I guess there are some similarities in those those environments, like nature wise. But what's like your idea of place to just, you're, you're, you're road tripping and you just hop out of the car and you're like, this is my scene. Oof. I love this in terms of nature. Yeah, you know, so I, I grew up in an island off the coast of Maine, and um, then I was a good New England prep school girl, so mm. I went to high school in Massachusetts, um, and then college in Colorado, and I really fell in love with the close proximity of the mountains in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the snow season was awesome, but the hiking season, like, was my favorite. Yeah. 
And after college, I moved to Seattle because I missed being on the coast, but I wanted to be near mountains and Seattle had both. So I moved there kind of sight unseen and lived there for 11 years. And I, you know, I really have that like that tear. Um, I really feel like I need the ocean and Mm -hmm. I am such a coast girl. I love islands. um, I love the water, but. I like to go hiking, and hiking on flat land is kind of boring. Yeah, no so. kidding. Well, how, how is Austin then? In the, I mean, you can kind of hike, but not really. Not really. Um, but I'm living right near Barton Springs, uh-huh. so I've been r- running in the morning and the late evening, like down along the river, which oh, is cool. super lovely, yeah. um, and jumping in the cold water, which is great. So being outside, just nature is really important to is me. Is it very refreshing for you? Or re- recharging, I guess? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I need that connection with the natural world for sure. Do you think, and you seem to possess a very good balance between making sure you're immersed in nature, but also that you're connected to people and the job, obviously. Yeah, I try. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all? <laughs> we, well, I, I don't think we all do try, actually. <laughs> Maybe. Do you... Do you find technology, social media a burden or is it a good tool for you? Oh, man. Um, I struggle with this all the time. Um, I would delete it all if I could. Yeah. Um, But I, you know, I I manage a lot of our accounts. Um, I sort of keep a lot of things in check and it's definitely tends to take over my time Mm. um it's a really hard thing to have boundaries with because there's like literally like teams of scientists in office who are trying to make it as addictive as possible and it's so easy to fall into like scrolling and all of a sudden the day's over and it's like what have you done today right right. so i you know i have time limits set on my social media um oh which apparently you have like you time? Do. How do you do yeah, that? Yeah, there's there's an iPhone setting you can like. I work for Apple and I didn't even realize. Really? That. Yeah. I'll try to remind remind I'll myself go. how, but I have I'll call I have some timer. people. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I was living in Washington this winter, I had um, an office where I put all my rum mm-hmm. so that when I was home, I wasn't surrounded by work. Oh, and wow. I have a work phone and a personal phone, and my work phone stays at work. It's a little bit hard right now because I'm living and working out of the same right. house but i really try to like just find boundaries that work and they kind of change all the time depending on if i'm you know on the road or in one place yeah. or kind of where what i'm doing and where i'm at which changes a lot but yeah i struggle with it it's weird I, 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 i'm just always consuming but not i'm almost always learning something yeah which is still not a good excuse yeah it's hard because I think that there's something really appealing, at least for me, about basically just being a hermit and living in a cabin in the woods and disconnecting from all of this because it's it's stressful. Like there's a lot of really hard stuff going on the world right now and it is really taxing on our psyches and our emotions and you know, how we interact with that and sometimes it feels a lot easier just to shut it off. But you know, but then you're out of touch with what's going on and what's important and like there's a lot of important conversations happening too so it's, it's a, everything you know. all yeah. everything all at once like that's a great movie and i love it but that, yeah but, <laughs> i but just thought it. It, yeah did you like it <laughs> i did yeah Be- amazing creative yeah, movie. like great. one of the greatest movies i've seen prime in my life but but that that title now is in my head all the time not because of the movie but because that's how everything feels like everything, absolutely totally and do you i don't think we probably get this but you ever have that whole fear like the tails thing i know you went to tails for maybe a couple days but did you i didn't i left yeah oh right you you were there what like a day or something i wasn't even there a day oh wow okay so it was in and out yeah i was i was in louisiana doing market work the week before and um it was great you know because i got to run around and i i lived there for six months Mm. so it was kind of just like running around and seeing a lot of friends who i haven't seen in a while and Super wonderful. And then, you know, after a week of market work, I was just really tired. And when I get tired, I feel like I just don't have anything really to Mm -hmm. give without recharging. And so I was going to push myself to stay a couple days into um, into tales. And I was like, you know, like I'm I'd rather wake up in Austin and go to my CrossFit gym in the morning. (laughs) So I took a flight back on Sunday night. That's incredible. um, You know, it's. I'm I'm definitely getting better of like knowing my limits and acting on what's best for me. 
it, um, the boundaries again, right? Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you feel as as you get older that you understanding when you need to set boundaries gets better and clearer, or is it still really a nice learning process that you haven't really mastered yet? I think that I mean I've been doing this job from this side of the business for five years, and I think that there's definitely a lot of pressure to do it all Mm -hmm. you know especially with a really small team um there's just two of us in the country um and we have 15 companies basically that we represent so there's a lot going on all the time and it's really easy to sort of get sucked into like the i i should right the shoulds Mm -hmm, i mm -hmm. should do this i should stay i should go out i should push myself but at the end of the day like i should also take care of myself Mm -hmm. and take some rest and remember like you know, we only have one life if we're not taking care of this one body that we have and this right. one mind that we have. Like, what are we doing? I wasn't put on this work world to just work all the time. Right, and, like, damage your <laughs> body all the time. Yeah, yeah, it's not good for anyone. And no. I'm not, you know, I'm not effective um, at what I'm trying to do, and I'm not, you know, showing up as my best self to be around other people. So I'm not sure that I've really figured out my boundaries, but I'm, definitely getting better at sort of seeing seeing the slippery slope mm-hmm. a little bit mm-hmm. more clearly and jumping off of the trail before I hit that's, <laughs> that's, rock bottom. That's it. It's yeah. just the, the, the ability to foresee <laughs> circum- things that may, may start coming totally, into place. Yeah, yeah. And I think that just comes from living it. Totally. Yeah. It does. And also just, you know, being self-aware and like checking in, being like, how does my body feel today? Yeah. Like, how does oh, yeah. my mind feel today? How does my liver feel today? Right, like I've been having this conversation also quite recently, and my friend, my dear friend Irene, she got a really beautiful looking pizza. I'm gonna tell you right now, it looked fucking delicious, right? <laughs> and so I, we're poking fun. I was poking fun of her a little bit. I'm like, how much did you eat? Because I could eat a whole pizza. You know, pizza is one of those things. But I, I told her we we're just talking about this morning. I said, I'm 42 now, and although I would love to eat pizza all the time not not in the cards for me yeah and th- these are the things that we learn right we you can yeah. in- i'm sure you and i have access to whatever booze we want whenever we want it totally but that's not a cabinet that needs to remain open all the but time. i think that that's such a good key like you know we were talking earlier about sort of our relationship with alcohol and like i've really really cut back on how much i consume and just try to be really mindful about it because mm-hmm. you know like like your pizza, I could drink every day, <laughs> right? And I could drink a lot every day, and I'm constantly surrounded by alcohol. And it kind of makes it less special. And mm. I think that, you know, if you had access to beautiful pizza every day, you'd just be like, okay, cool, <laughs> there's another pizza. But if you don't eat the pizza, and then you save that time when you're with, like, a really good friend, and you have, like, you know, maybe you're on a picnic, mm-hmm. and there's, like, this – you know, beautiful sunset and you eat the pizza and it just means something more (laughs) like that's a pizza eating experience that you're going to be like, man, that was totally worth it. I feel no regrets about eating that pizza. I that's a beautiful way to put it. I hadn't thought about it that way, but I think you're right. I mean, make some of this stuff special. Yeah. You know, and I think what would be the word abstaining is is one way to some degree to make things more special. Bring mindfulness into it, I think, mm-hmm. is just really important because, you know, I don't really drink on my everyday life. I, you know, I, I got to New Orleans. My first stop was Manolito, and I definitely had a frosty daiquiri, mm-hmm. and it was so delicious, and it was so good to see those guys, and I just love that bar so much. And I, you know, I fully enjoyed the experience and every single drop of that frosty daiquiri on a yeah. hot day in New Orleans, right? But like, you know, I, I, I think that, I think that we tend to bring like a lot of sort of guilt and, um, and our shoulds into it again. Like, mm-hmm. I should do this, I should do that, and the world is just not this or that. The world is all over the place. So I think that also just. Kind of approaching it with mindfulness and going easy on ourselves and giving ourselves grace yeah to like enjoy that thing to its fullest extent and then not feel guilty or weird about it like it's that's it, sex is a great example just the way that americans treat it yeah totally like, shame on you wait what i didn't do anything wrong yeah you know? do, you, do you watch movies at all 
Sometimes. Sometimes. Do you, yeah. you know Emma Thompson is? A amazing classic British actress. She's, I think, in her 60s Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, she, you, you certainly would rec- yeah, recognize absolutely. her, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I know who Emma Thompson is. And I hadn't said this, I don't think, on the mic yet, but I have talked about this movie that says, Good Luck to You or Good to Meet You, Leo Grant, something like that. Okay, I'm not familiar. Um, just came out. Okay. I guarantee she's going to be up for Golden Globe Academy Award. Like, it's just beautiful. But it, it's the most beautiful and earnest depiction of sexuality because she's a she's a recent widow and she never had an orgasm in her life and so she hires a sex worker to guide her through this process and they become friends and then you see that the, the judgment passing from her because she was a religious t- teacher and stuff it's mind-boggling but wow. but why it's so brilliant is it's not a you it's not an american movie <laughs> <laughs> yeah we couldn't do that. Yeah. We just, we judge. And I, I think we're so hard on ourselves all the time, to, to your point. And drinking is one of those things where there's probably some regrets at times. Yeah. I mean, I think that overindulgence, like if you if you eat that whole pizza, you might have a stomach ache, <laughs> right? Or, oh, yes. you know, any anything that you sort of overindulge with or just, you know, M- moderation is key, but yeah. as Oscar Wilde said, you know, everything in moderation, Mod- including, including moderation. moderation. <laughs> said that this morning, too. This is very strange. <laughs> All this stuff's like I was preparing somehow for some script or something. But when you talk about mindfulness, you, you've talked about running, which is good. So you, you're very, very much in touch with being, you're making your body healthy, keeping your body healthy and in sh- shape and all of that. What do you do for your, and I know that exercising does help your mind but there are other things like maybe like meditation or reading that you do to gain clarity mentally yeah i mean exercise is definitely one of them for sure i learned kind of later in life that you know i think you know thoughts and mental energy is still energy Mm -hmm. and if you don't find ways to expel it it just kind of cyclones inside of you Mm. and sometimes i feel like really stressed and dizzy and all over the place and I don't know why I'm like oh because I've been sitting in this chair staring at my computer all day like I gotta get out yeah. and expel some energy and that is you know physical but I think it's also super super mental um I I like to have a meditation practice I'm not always super consistent with it but mm-hmm. again trying to give myself grace you yeah, know sure. sometimes I'm really good and consistent and sometimes I'm not, um, but that's okay. Um, I think that also, you know, especially in the pandemic, really trying to like normalize therapy and how mm-hmm. important like just having a professional to talk with has been for me. Yeah. Um, is really, really cool. Um, so I, yeah, I, I regularly talk to a therapist um, for my mental health and also just to have someone check in and say, hey, Kate, like, How's your mind feeling today? How's your body feeling it's today? A super How's your spirit thing. feeling today? Yeah. You know, because I think that maybe it's also an Aquarian trait, but like I, I do so much for other people mm-hmm. all the time, and I'm always thinking about how I can, you know, help this person or represent this person or do a better job at giving, giving, giving. Right. That I often forget to also Anything focus that. Yeah. Yeah. Or just check in with myself. So it's really nice to have like, you know, a a paid professional who's not a friend, who's not intimately involved in my life, who I've honestly never met in person because mm-hmm. telehealth has become such a a cool thing that has made things so accessible. Um, you know, I grew up in a pretty, you know, New England family. Mm-hmm. Um, Is it quite religious there in that area? I don't know. I haven't spent much time uh, with that. My parents were kind of um, like more of like uh, new agey hippie types. Okay, cool. um, so not, I didn't really grow up in, in religious, but mm-hmm. no, I don't know. But very like just sort of um, stoic, I guess. Oh, okay. And it wasn't cool to like really talk about your feelings. Yeah. Um, three generations of men in my house. And um, my brother-in-law though is a, is a therapist and really helped me to kind of normalize that like, oh, this is something that could be like useful. And yeah. now like, I love it. It's so, so important to me. Um, Was there, I had an event in my life that triggered me to want to go to therapy. Yeah. For you, was it a, just a natural progression? Or it, it, of course, if you feel comfortable sharing, or was it 
just realizing it would be a benefit for you to engage in that. You know, I think that throughout my life, like I, I'm a little bit of an overachiever and I always, I'm, I'm like a say yeser, which I'm working on, mm-hmm. but I'll always like take on more things yeah. Yeah, to yeah. my detriment. Yeah. And I think that, you know, <laughs> one, of, that one, too, <laughs> one of the things that, um, you know, was positive for me in the pandemic is that it forced me to slow down. Um, I was in South Africa when the pandemic really hit. Mm. I caught a repatriation flight back to the U.S. and I ended up on an island off the coast of Washington or in the Puget Sound. Mm. And I feel like for years and years in my adult life, I've been thinking like, man, like if I could just have six months in a cabin in the woods to really like figure my shit out, you Mm. know? And then I realized, like, wait, I have a who knows how long on a cabin on an island. Like, I'm just going to go for it, you wow. know. So I, I, you know, started running. I started meditating. I really just was like, I have this time to dial into self-care, and I'm just going to do that. So I spent a lot of time um in a cabin in the Olympic National Forest, which is probably my favorite place in the world, um, and started regularly seeing a therapist and spending a lot of time with my niece and nephew and, you know, walking on beaches and just kind of like trying to get to know myself as an adult because Mm -hmm. honestly, I just haven't slowed down, you know? Went from college to managing bars and bar programs to this job and I just... I never stopped and like assessed and like refocused. So it was really like transformational for me. And I'm so grateful for that time. Mm. And, you know, life is a little bit back to, you know, we can like travel and we can be in a room together, which is cool. Yeah, no, it's great. (laughs) But, you know, just trying to like pull those things that I learned through life so that I don't go back to feeling just so empty or Mm -hmm. so like I've given it all away I guess I mean that's inspirational you know or perhaps aspirational for folks that that want to kind of pursue that because it's a real thing to say yes too much Mm -hmm. as sometimes we're talking peer-to-peer here yeah I I do that and it's it's also difficult to not try to please everybody totally you know and I, I guess I think that we probably have that in our natures maybe more than other people are like, fuck it, it's more for, for me. Right? Yeah. I don't think we're really about ourselves, really. We're kind of yeah. like about community more. Totally. Like people. So it's good to, to hear you kind of take that that time out to pursue that. Yeah. it's. I think it's also really was a, a revelation for me to understand that it's also like a lifetime's work mm, and you're never mm-hmm. going to get to a place where you're like, I'm here. I've made it to the top of the mountain. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. I won. Like, it's just not like that. Like you don't, you don't like peak and that's it. Like it's, it's always doing that work. You yeah. know, it's always continuing whatever sort of, I, I don't like the word practice, but whatever sort of um, commitments, I yeah. guess that you've yeah. made to yourself and then trying to like handle it with grace when you don't, make it and you know every day is a fresh day and yeah i think you know do the best we can it's a it's a beautiful way to look at it and you know i, I was surprised that you were going to be nervous to talk to me <laughs> I, like you know um i just let, let like, me preface that yeah. with uh you know i was sitting in the room um last month now when uh when my colleague juan was here and yeah. i was like oh my god he knows like all this stuff about him <laughs> like he's clearly done his research he knows stuff about my colleague that i don't know and I talk to Joan every day. Yeah. So I'm not used to people wanting to know about me as a person. Usually people mm-hmm. just want me to talk about rum. <laughs> so I was like, oh, God. It's well, like, and that's the whole thing that over the past seven years is that brands come and go. Some stay forever, you know. But people are really the, the resource and they're the currency here. You know what I mean? So we should know about each other because the reality is that we probably have a lot more in common. And if we can find... You already have fans. It's like and I know for a fact, and you, you remember Paul from Austin Shaker? He yeah, works, yeah, he's a good, he's a good friend of mine. Oh, he's great, and he, he he just he speaks so highly of you, and and it made me realize like you got a thing. People look up to you, and like Aww. you got a reputation and stuff in the rum community and the bartending community. And I was like, oh, cool. I mean, it just like 
I just wanted to talk to you and get to know you, you know, have this kind of excuse. But so one of the things is I was kind of tr trying to tie all these things together. I do think the way that, that you talk about life and the way that, that you've traveled with Rom and La Mesa and Nouvelier and, and these beautiful marks that you guys have. Ge geography makes sense. Mm -hmm. Archaeology is the other one. Mm -hmm. That makes sense too. Mm -hmm. As a kid, mm -hmm. very worldly. You, you say, you, you know, your, your parents are hippie dippy, as I say in air quotes. Yeah. Do you travel a lot? Do you love different cultures and all that? Yeah. Um, I, it's funny. It, it's definitely like a trajectory mm -hmm. of my life for sure. Um, I grew up on this small island. I think it was like population 600 people mm -hmm. in the winter. I had six kids in my class. Oh, shit. Wow. Population maybe 3,000 in the summer. Wow. So it would okay. like double. Um, and I remember distinctly like riding my bike around the island because that was the only thing to do, thinking like, man, as soon as I can get out of here, I'm going to go. <laughs> and when I was 12, I was... In, in the nearby town for some reason. And I remember seeing this um, bulletin board and it had this like um, uh, bike trip around the Netherlands okay. with a you know pull tab for the number. And I took it home and I said, can I, I don't know why even today, like I don't know what inspired me, but I brought it home and I said, can I do this? And my parents said, uh, yeah. So my first trip abroad was with um, like two other people from my town, um, the kindergarten teacher from my local six, 60 person school wow. uh, led this trip with like 60 kids for the Netherlands and we biked 250 miles around the Netherlands and That's... I was 12 wow. and that was my first trip abroad and I've just never looked back. Um, I kind of got into um, bartending because I could make enough money to afford a ticket and then have the flexibility to leave. Um, yeah. I spent a year and a half in college living in Thailand. Um, I, yeah, I've just always really had a strong importance in my life to having plane tickets. Yeah. And just getting to go experience people and places and other cultures. I think that we learn so much about ourselves and so much about the world when you see how other people live, mm -hmm. um, how other people think, um, how other people treat each other. And I think it's really important, at least for my human experience, to see that. Otherwise, it's so easy to get like locked into our own little bubbles and not kind of see the bigger picture. It you, you've got it, you know. Um, I I always think about New York not as a cultural mecca, mm -hmm. but as an architectural place. And so what I tell people a lot because I moved, you know, single mom till my folks got married when I was eight, so we moved around all the time. Mm -hmm. Every four years, like clockwork, right? So I've been in Austin the longest, and it's weird because I'm like, wait, I had that, that like that inclination to move all the time, and yeah. it, it still taps on these. It's like yeah. traveling, right? Yeah, I kind of got it out of my system a little bit, but the way I look at it is, you can build up mm -hmm. in the same place, mm -hmm. or you can build wide, which would mean go to all these different totally, you know. And so I I love that you you just there's so much left yet to be discovered yeah you know and I, I i love that because i we have those both have that kind of trait you know whether it's travel or art or, or whatever and i think it's insp inspires other people too but also how about this because i spent a i speak spanish okay mm -hmm. you know and i spent a month in oaxaca mm -hmm. by myself mm -hmm. people were in town all this bullshit mm -hmm. but some people says oh how do you i'm so envious like how did you do that yeah. Do you get the people that, yeah. you know what I'm getting at, right? Where they they, like, they yeah. can't possibly comprehend why you would. Yeah. So scary. Right? I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Especially um, with my road trip, people were like, you can't drive around the country by yourself. My dad was like, you should, maybe you should get a gun. Like, and he's not like a gun person. Yeah, right. but he was like, you know, how? what if you need to protect yourself? Like, this is so scary. Or, yeah, I mean, I, I also like to travel by myself. Same. And people are like, you're going where by yourself? I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I spent a, a month in India by myself. Oh, cool. As a, you know, American blonde girl. <laughs> I was like, this They is love intense. Americans, though. You know? Yeah. Oh, man. But I think that, you know, as you were kind of saying before, like, darkness breeds darkness and lightness mm -hmm. breeds lightness. And if you're 
open and look people in the eye and friendly, you kind of get that back. So I've, you know, really fortunate and so blessed to never have really had a bad experience. Like there have been, you know, like, oh God, I just missed the last train and what do I do? Where do I stay? And what am I, where am I? And what am I doing? Um, But I think that that's all like character building, right? Like Mm -hmm. you got to figure things out and know that you can. Yeah. And you learn a lot about yourself in those kind of um, shuffle of hard times and it wouldn't be travel without some, you know. Yeah. We got, it can't be perfect. Some good chaos. Yeah. You have to have, you got to suffer a bit. Totally. And you also just got to like remain flexible and open-minded and mm-hmm. happy. And like, you know, I, I don't really get impatient at like, I I like, I like airports. I like traveling. Mm-hmm. I like plane rides. I like all of the kind of logistical stuff sure. that a lot of people maybe get stressed out or they impatient. They might call it chaos. Actually. Yeah. I love it. You know, I like, uh. I like sitting on my backpack on the floor of an airport just watching people, yeah. you know? I I don't know. It's a it's a trait that I think is sometimes inherent and sometimes built, but mm. it definitely mm-hmm. comes from experience and there's definitely um some benefit in my life to being able to let go and just go with the flow. It's the greatest just, thing. Yeah, just give in. I the last road trip I took a year probably like a year and a half ago almost two years i didn't know where to go and my my partner at the time i was like i don't know where we should go so we just flipped a coin for everything yeah and we ended up in vegas i don't you know like cool it's just like cool and that's how it is now yeah i don't give a shit yeah what's so important about what kind of importance is tied to well where should we go get a drink next there's no importance no here we are right now yeah exactly yeah and a lot of that ties back to you know mindfulness and just being in your body in the moment Mm -hmm. and not i think it's so easy to like always be planning ahead and trying to make sure that you you know know the next three steps but like you miss the moment when you do that exactly you're too busy life isn't the the destination off in the horizon no the thing that you keep setting sail yeah it's it's this right now sitting in this room with you this is the only thing that matters exactly you know i don't i don't have you know, for anyone listening, I don't really have a larger point. I'm trying to drive here, right? Like, <laughs> it's really just a jazz duo, like wherever totally. we go with it, you know. But yeah. I, again, trying to paint all these things together, your your vast experiences and worldliness. Is that why rum is so appealing to you? Given it, it more than any mezcal is really one country, you know. If you think about multi states, but one country, yeah. tequila, but rum yeah. is transcontinental. Yeah. Is that maybe one of the elements that drew you to it? I think so. Um, I mean, I when I was little, I just wanted to get paid to travel and figure out how to do that because oh, I got bit good. by the bug really early. Yeah. And I went to college to be um, – I, I wanted to be Indiana Jones mm-hmm. um, or work for, like, National Geographic, be a photojournalist, do something like that. And I was like, well, why don't I get, like, the backbone of that? So I have a degree in – um, anthropology with a concentration in archaeology and a degree in geography with a concentration of geology. And mm. I love, you know, I love people and I love places and I like history. And when I moved to Seattle, I started um, managing a wine program at a Spanish restaurant. And I really liked um, just the sense of, uh, a real thing made by real people. Mm-hmm. I got to, um, you know, travel to Spain and meet producers and, you know, get in a Jeep with Raul Perez and, you know, just mind blowing experiences and just really seeing the culture and community that was reflected into the liquid in my glass. Yeah. And when the owner of that place asked me to open a uh, rumba with him, I didn't know anything about rum because there was a so very few rums on the market and the ones that were on the market were, you know, the, the Bacardi, the Captain Morgan, the Malibu, the kind of things that, um, you know, before 10 years ago, a lot of people thought that that was the end all be all of rum. Mm -hmm. And there just wasn't a lot of information or education available. Um, and Seattle is probably the farthest place from the Caribbean (laughs) possible. Um, so I, you know, with my sort of, um, 
a tendency to make a travel experience out of everything. Yeah. I uh, bought tickets to the Caribbean and I traveled to five different islands and I rented a car and drove around and just talked to people and asked people how they drink rum and what do you do here? And, you know, mm. what do people, you know, it was the off season, it was July. Um, so there weren't a lot of people <laughs> in the right, Caribbean, yeah. but the distilleries were open and people were kind of like, hey, like, what, what are you doing here? Well, I heard that you make the best rum in the world. I'd be like, ah, yes, we do. Come on in. Yeah, Let me show you. you. Um, which is a really good trick for every distillery <laughs> that you ever go to. But I heard that you make the best rum. <laughs> oh, I like that. I'm going to start yeah. using that. You should use it. It's good. Um, it work every time. I think. Yeah. But I think that I, I sort of understood exactly what you said. Rum is such a global spirit. Um, it's really tied you know, often to um, agriculture, often to terroir, to mm -hmm. soil, um, to really g geography and geology. And then it's really tied to communities, to people, to producers, to their families, to generational know-how. Um, and the stuff that I felt most connected with after running Rumba for five years um, was all this stuff that was just so connected to the people, the places, the land, the communities. Mm. And it all had this little word Bellier on the back. <laughs> and one day, um, now my colleague, Daniele Bionde, uh, called me and said, uh, Kate, we'd like to invite you to come to Haiti to uh, travel and visit Clahan Distilleries. You know Clahan? I said, yes. I think my face turned white. Mm. And um, I just, I went and I visited and I traveled around Haiti and it was unlike anywhere I'd ever been. And it completely blew my mind. And it was just the most beautiful, um, rich, uh, just incredible culture that I'd ever got to you know, visit for a couple of days. And I fell in love with the liquid and the producers and just really seeing the agricultural process. I was like, this is it. Like, this is this is what I want to do. I mean, if you wrote your your dream job at 12, yeah. like that would be exactly totally the thing. yeah it was like everyone took ev or someone took everything i loved and just put it into this like you know beautiful box and said here you go and so i said hey guys like i'd love for this to be available in the u.s and i'd love to be a part of making that happen and i'd really like for you to hire me to manage the american market for you i remember they just thanks said, kay See they ya. said okay <laughs> so okay what do you mean okay they said okay wow i was like Oh, okay. So I, I remember I got back to a uh, rumba and uh, my, my bar manager at the time, my managing partner, Jim Romdahl said, uh, how was Tails? And I said, I, I think I just got a job with Valier. <laughs> he said, so you won Tails. I said, I mean, I'm not really sure what just happened. And, uh, you know, in, in typical Italian style, I heard nothing for three months. Of and then course. it was, uh, okay, can you move to New York? And we'll launch in February. And so I moved to New York on a three-week notice. And um, it's been a whirlwind of almost five years now. It'll be five years in, in November. That I can't believe it's been that long. Because I, I, I think what I was actually thinking of, we've been in the same room twice, actually, besides you being here to, to, in front of a microphone. Once was at Pershing's. It was like a soft launch for Tiki Tatsuya. And they did, remember they didn't have a, they didn't mm, have a space yet. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that because we yeah. we didn't talk, but I knew you were in the room. Which is, totally. Again, your your reputation. And then I remember the launch of Clarin. Yeah. At at uh, Domo Alligato. Yeah. Oh god, that was so fun. That was a great. Yeah. Tasting. It yeah. was so hot out, and we had like the misters going. Yeah. And <laughs> and a bunch of wrong. I mean, it's in a way. The power of asking for something here is maybe one of the messages too, right? Yeah, I think. Did so. you? Because you you knew that's what you wanted, you know? Yeah. But maybe maybe not exactly in in the nice little bo gift box, as you say. But do you find that when you make something known? Mm hmm. I think maybe you know what I'm getting at. If you if you make it known to your friends, your family, to the universe, whatever, that it ends up happening. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, sorry, I said the universe. No, Mark, I, Mark, I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I totally agree. Um, you know, my, my sister often tells me that I have this like knack or this like gift of finding like really cool places to live. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, it's just because I ask, like I, for example, um, last winter it was just getting really, really gray in Seattle mm -hmm. and I just really needed some sun on my skin. And I was talking to my friend Greg Goldstein in Florida and I was like, 
you know, he just started working for our distributor there. He used to uh, manage this cool bar. And offhandedly, I was like, Greg, like, if you know anyone who has, like, a little beach house in a sunny spot that needs me to come live there for a month, let me know. And he literally called me the next day, and he was like, so this is really weird, oh, but my wow. mother-in-law needs someone to come dog sit for her house in Puerto Rico. Could you be there in 10 days? And I booked a flight. And it's, like, exactly what you said. Sometimes you just need to make things known and ask for it, yeah. and things will just appear. Like, you just never know. And what's the worst that can happen if you do make it known and it doesn't happen? Totally. Maybe it wasn't the right thing to ask for. A hundred percent. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's just, it's it's very interesting because I feel something that, that I'm, I'm really, I think is really lovely about the, this conversation is I can, and you probably have this kind of intuition too, but a lot of people that I, I talk to, they feel heavy. Mm. They feel burdened by something. Mm. And they may not tell you. And they won't usually, no, they'll never tell you, unless it's like 10 drinks or whatever, right? But there's something's holding them back. Yeah. Could be themselves, could be any, any number of things. But like, this is one of the first times I think in all the conversations I've had where I feel like you are, com- you feel completely unburdened to me. I, this just like, the, <laughs> like the, your, your weight and like the, just the, the kind of rapport. I'm like, man, if, even now I feel like everything's more possible than I ever thought, even before talking to you. It's re- it's weird. It's hard huh. to say. I'm like kind of inspired. It's really nice. <laughs> you know? I mean, I think that it's like you said earlier, like some people are just like, but, but how can you live like that? How could you do that? Right. And sometimes it's just a decision, right? Yeah. You just oh, yeah. decide to do that. Like, and there there's there's give and take for sure. You know, I I can't have a dog. I would oh, love yeah. to have a dog, yeah. right? Whenever I see dogs like I am constantly <laughs> checking out dogs like yeah. when I'm out in the world I'm just like you know if it was a person it'd be really inappropriate right like, yeah <laughs> so inappropriate but yeah can I pet your dog um I want one so bad um yeah. I would love to have a garden I think mm. that there's such um just privilege and beauty of being able to grow your own food um watch you know watch things grow grow mm-hmm. tomatoes I um, moved to Austin for the summer and immediately planted some uh, some chili plants, mm-hmm. some pepper plants. Um, so I, you know, have my little my little chili patch. <laughs> no better place to grow chili. Totally, patch. yeah. Um, so there's definitely like some some sacrifices that I would like to have in my life, mm. and maybe someday I can have a dog. But right now, I don't know. I think that looking at life with just endless possibilities and trying to navigate what what works best and yeah. what you can do and what you can experience and how you choose to live it is you know something that i really enjoy but it's it's also not for everyone you know it's not yeah it's it's not i i'm with you for the most part like on pretty much every one of these things yeah know? and yeah uh, and i i think it's a beautiful way to live and it yields the best stories and if you ever fancied yourself a writer, it'd be great to capture all these things one day when you're yeah. reflecting, you know, because I'm sure you've got not tales of drama and chaos, but just truly intriguing observations about the places that you've been. You As know? an Aquarian, I'm a very good observer. Yeah. yeah. Every, every room I get into, I know everyone that's not know them personally, but I'm like, yeah. oh, that person's in the corner. And like, this is yeah. Where. Yeah. It's that's really the richest part of life, I think, is everything that it has on display. Yeah, maybe, you know, going back to our sort of first early conversation, maybe that's a big piece of the Aquarian thing. Not that you don't care, mm. just that you're kind of busy observing. Oh, yeah. You're kind of taking it all in to a degree that sometimes makes you maybe seem detached mm-hmm. from it. Mm-hmm. But in fact, you're really just trying to understand it. Yeah, and it goes, it's like the whole other side of it, if it was a spectrum, right? Or like aloofness to incredible observe, observation, right? They're really in the same neighborhood yeah. on the spectrum, and they both visually, I think, on our faces look the same. Too. Probably. So it's like, you, are you even fucking paying attention? Yeah, yeah yes, I'm here. I'm like super paying attention. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it, I want to talk about, I think that one of the, the main things about doing these interviews is I always want people to feel closer to the people that I'm interviewing, right? But of course, I understand you all have some beautiful brands. And I've talked about La Mesa and Velier. I say Velier, you say Velier. <laughs> it's, it's, either way. <laughs> like the, getting into that with Joan, right? Yeah, it doesn't matter. First time I've agreed with a French person. <laughs> um, he's so great. He's cool. He's a cool guy. 
But you gave me a bottle. This is a real new release from y'all. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about it. Because I just the only thing I think I know is that it's a blend of two different Jamaican distilleries. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Tell me, yeah. Yeah, tell me a little more about what goes yeah. into that bottle and the so name of it and all that. The, uh, the original Papaleen was released in 2015, I believe. Oh, so it's a while ago. Um, And it was a blend of Venezuela, Cuba, and I apologize, I can't remember. Um, European only release mm-hmm. before my time. Um, <clears throat> but it... Um, was just kind of that one off, and then this year uh, they decided to kind of resurrect the brand. So it's oh, our cool. kind of new blending uh, brand. I like Joan keeps saying, you know, it's trying to make blending like cool again, <laughs> um, because so much blending, you know, when you see blended bottles of rum, there's so little information about the liquid that's inside, right. um, where it comes from, where it was aged. It's just like about the brand name and mm-hmm. not about. The actual liquid right and like everything that we do it's all about you know the liquid the producers where it comes from where it was aged um what is iconic of the source mm-hmm. um and then in this case you know putting two beautiful things together to making a sum that's not better than the parts but different, really different. than the parts yeah. you know a different expression so it's um liquid from the worthy park distillery which I love. I think Worthy Park is just supreme elegance of Jamaican rum. Mm -hmm. You know, it's got complexity. It's got um, intrigue. It's got always, for me, this, like, kind of, like, like creme brulee note to it. It's really, like, uh, confectionery Uh um, on the the nose. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Um, And then it has the, you know, the depth, the character, the kind of power of Hamden Estate. And Mm -hmm. those two things blended together, I think, are... Just such a beautiful bottling. Um, the Super li- complimentary. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's, yeah. it's uh, I love the, the thought that things into, you know, what is it? Uh, oh, yeah, blue and yellow, right? So yellow. Oh, yeah, I get yellow. Blue, yeah. yeah. You put it together. If I remember, it's green, right? <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> green sure shit doesn't look like yellow or blue. So right. I love that that's when you can do blending. Beyond it being cool, it unlocks and unleashes these flavor combinations you couldn't get any other way. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And so this would be, you think, a yearly or biannual thing to do new blends, ultimately? Yeah, so we, we had the uh, the Jamaica seven-year come. Um, at the end of the year, we'll also have a Papaleen Haiti mm, cool. arrive, which is a blend of uh, five distilleries and 14 casks. Wow. Um, I haven't tasted it yet, but... I mean, I haven't tasted anything from Haiti that I haven't <laughs> loved. So yeah. I'm really, really excited to try it. Um, that'll be a little bit higher in ABV, too. Yeah. Um, I think it's just over 50, if I recall. Um, I was staring at it on yeah, a spreadsheet, yeah. but I haven't I haven't seen it yet. So um, that'll be arriving. And then I'm not sure what they have planned for the future, but I think that that will kind of be our, our, our blended range. You know, mm-hmm. we have a lot of different um, projects in, in the company, um, you know, distillery representation like Hamden Estate, um, collaboration projects like Spirit of Haiti, um, independent bottlings like Transcontinental. Yeah. So it's kind of cool to have a blended range um, that is just kind of accessible and approachable. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the price point is really good. It's it's really affordable. Um, You know, I'm very like, rum should be for everyone. Mm -hmm. I want everyone to have access. to these beautiful spirits and to enjoy it and just you know it's my favorite thing ever when people tell me like oh man i didn't know that rum could taste like this like this is what rum tastes like (laughs) yeah it's crazy (laughs) this is it like Like, i love i just love those moments like cognac at a moment like that calvados at a moment like that mezcal rum especially at a moment i think yeah Everything was forever changed when yeah. I had rum fire, I think. was the first Yes, and I was me like, too. I was like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. You have like the needle drop off the rack. It just uh-huh. looks like the room stops. Like, what the fuck's going on here, right? Yeah. So it, rum is, that's the thing. I think it's 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 so cool because it, it goes in so many different directions. Totally. And that you can hardly ever predict. Yeah, I, I like agree. That. Yeah, I, I sort of start to feel like a broken record when I say this, but um, I really like to say that rum is like sandwiches. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't tell me that you don't like sandwiches. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there is a sandwich for you. Hell Maybe, yeah. like, you had too many, like, 
peanut butter and jellies as a kid, but like a gooey grilled cheese, uh-huh. turkey club, Cubano, you know, Cubano it, like it goes all over. Place. Yeah, the category is so broad. Then you can get into conversations about what is or is not a sandwich, like yeah. you know. But the category is so so broad that there is a sandwich out there that is for you, and rum is the same way. Like, is by far the most diverse category of spirit mm-hmm. on the planet. Because it comes from so many places, you know, it's made in, it's more like wine, yeah. right? Yeah, oh yeah. Like, the regionality, um, the diversity within the regionality, um, the raw material, production the fermentation, method, right? the production like, method. That. Yeah, it's it's such a broad category that when people are like, oh, I don't like rum. I'm like, challenge accepted. Yeah, well, that, that's good. <laughs> you, that, that's one way to look at it. Yeah, way, let's go. Yeah, that's a real positive, <laughs> very pragmatic way to look yeah, at it. Yeah, but it's fun because you're going to hit an aha moment because yeah. you have to. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe rum fire isn't for everyone. It's certainly for me. Oh, man. It's um, yeah, but I think even, you know, when you first encounter rum fire or River Antoine mm-hmm. or these like really potent, um, highly aromatic spirits, and you smell them, it's it's like a shock to your system. Oh, yeah. Like, it, it affects you physically. Mm-hmm. You're like, what is this? And then I think it really, like, you know, those high esters kind of, like, get into your soul a little bit. I and think you start so. searching for them. It's like the MSG of Rome. You yeah. Know, it, it's craveability with those esters. Totally, yeah. So I've got two questions left for you. Um, one, and I, I, th- I hope I'm not botching these numbers. So I'll, I'll say I'm kind of. Uh, aggregated but i think i read this past week that in the eu rum sales finally outpaced whiskey sales is that true i i i really think it's true because it was a good source and i can't remember what it was huh. but if let's say that is true yeah. and I'll, I'll try to find the, the source itself okay yeah i haven't heard that so that's very exciting it's, it's well in europe and that means it's like a title shift in paradigm and stuff I mean, it could be that's because big. of scotch whiskey expert anyway it could be Many explanations, but does that make you feel pretty good to think that, that maybe the global trends are finally in favor you know, of rum? So I, th- I think that people love to say that we've all been saying <laughs> for 20 years, this is exactly. going to be the year of rum, right? And yeah. people love to say that they've been saying that for 20 years. Uh-huh. Like yeah. it's, it's a thing that everyone says. And for me, like I want, I want these brands to be successful because I really care about the people who are producing them and I like seeing money poured into the Caribbean right so of course I want these brands to be successful and to hit their heyday and I want people to understand and to appreciate and to see the value in Caribbean spirits and rum in general a hundred percent but if it means (laughs) if it means that rum becomes um, sort of the the tornado that the American whiskey world has become. Like if if yeah. rum just becomes inaccessible or more about posturing bottle shots. Yeah, that's an aspect of, of modern bourbon culture. Yeah, and I see it in rum a little bit too, especially you know with a lot of our bottles. If you look at the old Valier Demerara's or mm-hmm. the Caronies or you know some of that type of stuff, like you see them on the same auctions, which I think is great for the recognition of the brands because again like i think it's you know so incredible that these distilleries who have been producing for 300 years Mm -hmm. you know we have a bottle of hamden estate great house from 2022 this bottle made me cry when i first tasted Mm -hmm. it it's so delicious but to see these on the auction sites i'm like cool like people are getting it people are seeing the value and the importance of bottles like these but there's just so much drama that i kind of see and like a lot of ego attached to it, I oh, think, yeah. Um, yeah. in the sort of tornado of the the American whiskey world. So if rum having its heyday means that it gets like swept up into that sort of thing, like mm. I'm really good at just like coasting along right where it is, yeah. you know, staying approachable, staying accessible, staying really enjoyable for people who want to drink the liquid and enjoy it and open their bottles and yeah. share them by the people for the people by the people for the people yeah. you know uh rum is best when shared with friends these bottles are meant to be opened and enjoyed and you know having those those sunset pizza moments with you know <laughs> which i doubt you thought you were gonna ever say that never but i i want that for rum you know i want it to be something that is 
accessible and enjoyable mm-hmm. and a a memorable experience for people because that's what it's been for me. You yeah. know, I remember the first time I tasted Claron. I remember the first time I tasted Rum Fire. I think I was the first bar in the country to ever carry it. Yeah. We were the first country in the world to ever have it exported, it's, it's, thanks to my friend Nick Ferris. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, it's I, I remember those moments because they were really special because I think rum is really, really special. Yeah, it is. It is. Well, and so I don't know how you're going to answer this question. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, but it's not a confusing one or any of that, but I ask everybody this question. Uh, and when people prepare for it, uh, my friend Cameron, oh, he's living in Portland. Anyway, so he, he was one of the last interviews I did. He works for Fidencio. And I'm like, you already, you already know you're going to answer this question, don't you? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to trip him up. But anyway, I'm not. that's not what it's about. I love music i love art just in general author you can consider art whatever you want really so let's say you're sipping this beautiful hamden great house man it was really good what's the proof on this 55 God, i've been sipping it the whole time for for those of you who can maybe hear me slurping rum but you're sipping this bottle anywhere in the world that it doesn't matter but you're sitting next to and having a conversation with anybody living or deceased who would you love to just sit there sip this beautiful rum and have a conversation with um i would love to sit and have a beautiful conversation with my grandfather Mm. um he passed away in 1997 um my parents worked a lot as Mm -hmm. a kid and so he kind of raised me a bit um he taught me to play cribbage oh cool as a kid Uh, that's how i learned to count my sister and i still play Um, he used to have, you know, empty maps and make me fill them in. He was, um, kind of an old school New England academic. And I think that I was too young to really know him. Mm -hmm. And I would love, yeah, I'd I'd love to share a glass of rum with him and know him as an adult, because I think that he had a lot to offer my life Mm -hmm. and a lot of wisdom that I could have learned, but he left us too soon. And I... I think just hearing about him, you'd probably have so much in common with him, and it yeah. would be like uncanny, probably. Yeah, I'd I'd love to have a conversation with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's good. It's a beautiful sentiment. Well, as we found out earlier, when you arrived, you're gonna be in Austin for a little while. Longer. Yeah, I'm here for a little so, bit. Yeah. So I hope that people get to see you out and about if you're doing some tastings and other kinds. Totally. Of things. I mean, there's also. A surprising amount of Hamden Estate in Texas. Um, I was uh-huh. looking at our inventory and I was like, wow, there's a lot of fun stuff, which, you know, these bottles go so quickly and yeah. they've been sold out. So it's kind of like, I'm kind of like a, a kid in candy store. Like, yeah. look at these bottles. Like, I never get to have bottles of Hamden oh, nice. Great House. Like, this doesn't exist. So, yeah. Um, yeah so I think I'm going to be running around Texas pouring a lot of Hamden Estate and Habitat San Velier and all these, you know, bottles that I love so dearly. And I, I never get to play with so it's not a bad gig it's not a bad gig it's not that is for sure and years in the making we finally made it happen kate, hey, thanks so much for taking it. the time out Thank we'll talk so soon much, Mike. yeah I appreciate cheers. it well there we have it kate perry from la maison Ivelier and transcontinental rum line these are some great rums we tried and there's another interview coming out with one of her mates at Mason and Bailey, we talk more about rum and France and stuff like that. But there, you know, there's one thing I want to kind of double down on here. I want to cover again is when we're talking about traveling. You know, I have a friend who had time away from the family. She's got two kids. Had time away from the husband to go see a show in Ireland, right, in Dublin. And I don't know. She had five, six days out there by herself. She flew home early because she couldn't stand being alone out there. Now, to me. And Kate, too, I could assume this sounds like a preposterous thing. I love traveling by myself. I love solitary things, sitting at a bar by myself, just observing people or writing. Now, keep in mind, I love relationships as well. But it's something I really want you all to think about. How do you travel? Do you do it for the Instagram? Do you do it for the experiences? Do you nap? Do you eat? Do you over plan? You know, do you like being alone? These are things that I think we all kind of maybe we don't think about them, but especially in the context of traveling, I think it's something really worth introspecting about. So thanks, everybody, for listening to Show to V with Mike G. No matter how many more horror movies you have to watch in the 
month of October, and I would say the Hellraiser reboot is quite good. Please keep dancing.